The famous physicist Richard Feynman learned calculus at a really young age. He read a book called Algebra for the Practical Man and he found it to be really, really easy. Then he tried Trigonometry for the Practical Man and he said he was unimpressed and it was boring. When he picked up this book, Calculus for the Practical Man, it's part of the Mathematics for Self-Study series, he was really impressed and it left a lasting impression on the legendary Richard Feynman. His father didn't really understand the book. He was kind of like perplexed and confused by the mathematics in this book. And a young Feynman recalls that this was the first time he realized that he knew more than his father. Let's take a careful look at this book. This is Mathematics for Self-Study, a group of books that make easy the home study of the working principles of mathematics by J. E. Thompson, B.S. and E.E.A.M., Associate Professor of Mathematics, School of Engineering, Pratt Institute. You see here there's other books in this series. I have most of these. I don't have all of them, and I'm sorry, I just have to smell it because, oh, it smells incredible. My copy smells so good. I'll leave a link in the description of this video in case you want to check out this book. This one was originally published in 1931. And then again in 46, this must be the 1946 edition. Let's take a look here at the preface. This book on simplified calculus is one of a series designed by the author and publisher for the reader with an interest in the meaning and simpler technique of mathematical science. And for those who wish to obtain a practical mastery of some of the more usual and directly useful branches of the science without the aid of a teacher. It's a book for self-study, which is very rare, especially during this time. Like the other books in the series, it is the outgrowth of the author's experience with students, such as those mentioned, and the demand experienced by the publisher for books, which may be read as well as studied. Yeah, I mean, back then, you know old math books, right? You know how hard they are. They're rigorous. Everything is left to the reader. This book is an exception. Brooklyn, New York, October 1945, J.E. Thompson. Let's take a look at the contents here carefully. Chapter one is Fundamental Ideas, Rates, and Differentials. So this is the book for beginners. You could buy this book and learn calculus like a young Feynman did. I believe he was 16 years old or so when he was using this book. Chapter two is Functions and Derivatives, the meaning of a function, classification of functions, Differential of a function of an independent variable, the derivative of a function. Chapter three, differentials of algebraic functions. So has a little intro. Differential of the square of a variable, differential of the square root of a variable, differential of the product of two variables, differential of the quotient of two variables. So really basic calculus. If you know some calculus, a lot of this is going to be review and it's going to give you a different perspective. There's some more topics there. Chapter four, use of rates and differentials in solving problems. Chapter five, differentials of trigonometric functions. We get some trig derivatives here. Angle measure and angle functions. Interesting. Differential of the sine and cosine of an angle. It's funny how the just the, the contents and the layout and even the titles of the chapters and subsections are very different from some of the newer books. Cool. Let's go here. Velocity, acceleration, and derivatives. There's a whole chapter on that. That's still something that's covered in Calculus 1 courses today. Chapter 7, interpretation of functions and derivatives by means of graphs. Chapter 8, maximum and minimum values. 9 is problems in maxima and minima. 10, differentials of logarithmic and exponential functions. Wow, I just have to smell it again. Ah, uh, it's just incredible. Summary of differential formulas, reversing the process of differentiation, integral formulas, how to use integral formulas, interpretation of integrals by means of graphs, 
graphi graphical applications of integration, use of integrals in solving problems. So you can see it's got a lot of mathematics. It's just a small book. And then here we have the natural law of growth and the number E. And uh, we have some things there at the end. Hyperbolic functions, cool. So let's just look through it. Um, this book also has something really special too. Let me show you. Let's go to the back here. Well, it's got an index, which most books have. That is useful. It's got some integral tables in the back as well. And then here we have the magic. It has answers to the problems. That's right, so you get answers to the exercises and the problems. Now you don't have a ton of exercises, but this is following article 19, page 30. So let's go there. So page 30. Oh, it smells so good. It smells like an old comic book. Here you get some examples. So it's not gonna make you like a master at calculus. I mean, if you compare some of these exercises to the books in modern calculus books, some of these are pretty easy. Uh, although some of these can be kind of annoying. Like number 12 is like a quotient rule and the chain rule. You've got the square root there, but um, you know a lot of the problems in modern textbooks are harder. But these these are pretty good. I mean, they're not terrible. You got some power rule examples, and you got some chain rule ones, and some quotient rules, and um, and you have some other things with roots, etc. So it's a good mix. It's a good mix, and you can see that it does uh, have examples: seven, eight, nine. So it goes through and it gives you examples and it shows you how to, how to work through it. Let's skip to it like a different section. Let's see what this is. Reversing process of differentiation. So it's going through the opposite of differentiation, which is integration. We have integral formulas obtained directly from differentials. So they go through and they give you some formulas for integration, which are super useful. These are covered in a Calc 1 class. But here's the infamous power rule. This is one that will work uh, all the time unless m is negative 1. If m is negative 1, then you get the natural log of the absolute value of x. And he says here, this is the final formula for integrating x to the m dx, in which m uh, may represent any exponent, whatever, except m equals negative 1. So you see it has a lot of the uh, familiar mathematics that you would see in a regular calculus book. So it's nothing like extraordinary or special, but I think the fact that it's such an old book and was written by Thompson, which was a legendary author, especially for the time, um, I just have to smell it again, I know. I think this is the third time I've smelled it. Ah, oh, I just love this book. <laughs> it smells so good. But it's just like a piece of history. You know, Richard Feynman, when he was 16 years old, this is the book that he used and he was uh, you know, he's considered a genius by many people. You know, when people think of genius or physics genius, they think of, you know, Albert Einstein, Richard Feynman. Um, yeah, very, very smart people who uh, did a lot of important physics for the world. And they all started somewhere, right? And this is where a young Richard Feynman started uh, with this book here, Calculus for the Practical Man. So, yeah, kind of interesting. I will leave a link in the description in case you want to check out this book. But yeah, hopefully if you do buy it, you can learn a little bit from it. Uh, even if you read it just a little bit, you'll probably get something from it. The, the explanations aren't exactly the same as they are in modern books. It's a much older book. Again, originally published, and I believe it was 1931, right? Which was uh, a very long time ago, right? That's, yeah, wow. wow we're not, it's not quite 100 years old. We're not there yet, but... It's getting there, right? It's getting there. It says, all correspondence should be addressed to the principal office of the company at Princeton, New Jersey. We had D. Van Nostrand, D. Van Nostrand Company, Inc. Cool. Yeah, wow. Old school book. If you want to learn calculus, uh, I actually have courses on my website, mathsorcerer.com. They're actually on the Udemy platform, but if you get them, uh, please go through my website because it helps me also, uh, the prices are low, so I've set the prices to be as low as possible. So yeah, mathsorcerer.com. And if you're not a subscriber and you found any value at all in this content and you want to subscribe, feel free to subscribe if you want to. If not, that's okay too. Hopefully if you get anything, take anything away from this video is that this is the book that Feynman used to teach himself calculus. It has answers to all of the problems. It's interesting and yeah, that's it. Hopefully you go and do some mathematics. Take care.